In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Google Calendar as a content calendar. I'll be demonstrating using it for a podcast, a blog, and YouTube as well, plus an email newsletter. I go through the exact steps you have to do to use the calendar, and then I show you a couple little pointers um, because I make a couple mistakes along the way, which is totally natural, but that gives me an opportunity to show you how to fix it. So that's awesome. My name is Doug Cunnington, founder of Niche Site Project. I mostly talk about Amazon affiliate sites and internet marketing, some productivity stuff, and if you are into that sort of thing, have a look at some of the other videos, consider subscribing if you like what you see, and if you do, hit the bell notification so you know when I put out a new video. So let's get to the demo right now. What's happening, folks? I'm creating a content calendar on Google Calendar, all right? So there's a lot of different tools that you could do this with. I'm deep in the like Google ecosystem, I guess. So I use Gmail. I use all like Google um, Docs, Google Sheets, and Forms, and everything. Everything that I can, I use Google Drive. So everything is just kind of consolidated well. And I will be going on a trip soon. I'll actually be on the road for quite a while. I'm taking quite a bit of time off. So it's very important for me to plan ahead. And the other component is I will most likely be bringing a Chromebook, not my MacBook, which I'm pointing to right down there. It's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit cheaper, and I won't be doing any like heavy lifting as far as computing power. So again, I'm just like even deeper in the Google ecosystem. Obviously, it doesn't matter what machine I, I would bring or if I had a tablet or whatever, I would be able to get to my Google Calendar. But the point is, um, I'm deeply rooted in the Google ecosystem. Okay, with that said, I have created a new calendar. Um, so that's super simple to do. I should have done that before, but basically um, you could just um, create a calendar here, create a new calendar, and then it takes like one second, you enter the name of it. In this case, this is, I just called it content. All right, so I do content in three main places and then a little bonus one, which I'll mention in a second. So the first thing um, I do is blog posts. So I'm gonna, I publish those on Monday most of the time. So right now, the day I'm recording this, it's actually um, like the next Monday coming up is Memorial Day. So I probably won't publish anything then because a lot of people will be taking the day off and a lot of people read my stuff when they're at work instead of working. Thank you for doing that. But what I can do here is just to say blog, post. Um, and then that's all I really need to do. Pretty straightforward. I will put more options on here because what I will do is say that it does repeat weekly. Now, I'm not using like this is my, you know, regular calendar. So I don't need to assign like a time for it or anything like that. Although if you're interested, I usually um, turn turn on or publish blog post either at 6 a.m. Mountain Time or 8 a.m. Mountain Time. It's rather arbitrary though. So as we're moving forward here, I will just put the like some color on here that's a little bit different. So I'm going to say the blog is this darker green. Again, it's just arbitrary. So I'm I'm just going to have this like ongoing, moving forward. All right. So I'm not going to put a you know, certain number of them out there. So I'll just save that. And then you'll see it populates for every Monday. The other thing that happens on Monday is a podcast episode. So same deal. I'll just put uh, podcast. And I will put a different color on that. Why don't we use yellow? Again, I will repeat weekly on Monday, just ongoing forever save it and i know people you are thinking um well you're, you don't have any detail in there right you don't have um like what blog post is going to be published or what podcast episode don't worry i will come to that in a second so the other thing going on is on thursdays i have another podcast episode coming out so i have two per week same situation as before 
I'm going to go ahead and color that yellow. And actually, as we're going through, uh, again, the smart people are ahead of me here. And what I should do is I can go back and edit. So if you make the same mistake, all right, this is what you can do. So weekly on Monday, but you can actually customize it and say Monday and Thursday every week. And then when you save it, I'm going to apply it to all events and then I'll say, okay. And then you'll see, boom, now it's on Thursdays too. Now, the other thing that I have going on um, that I'll mention, we're going a roundabout way for this, but this is kind of how my brain works, especially this time of day. This is the evening for the people that are paying attention to the darkness outside. So on Fridays, I want to send out um, an email newsletter for, and I'll just put email and I'll put NSP, which is niche site, niche site project. And then I will also note that this one is sort of like the, uh, it's like the weekly wrap up. So I've been doing this um, lately and the reality is the reason why I do that is I send out emails, um, you know, whenever I publish something new. However, um, people don't open every email that I send. I know when I receive emails, even from people that I enjoy, you know, reading their content or consuming their content, I don't open every single email, especially if I have shit going on. So if I have shit going on, I may not get to it. Maybe I just archive it and I come back to it later. Maybe I never do. Um, but the thing is, even if I send out like one email per week where I'm like, hey, I published a blog post, not everyone, even people that want to read it, get a chance to read it. So the weekly wrap up is a chance for me to, you know, wrap up the week, put a little extra commentary. Um, I'm starting to put like more personal stuff and like, you know, I don't know if people care much about it. I'm sure some people don't care at all, but maybe I'll put a picture of me going out uh, hiking or maybe, you know, doing something interesting. Like I said, maybe I'm just walking outside and my dog does something awesome. All right. So that, that can happen too. So weekly wrap up, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and I want to do it on Fridays. Again, um, there's other advantages to this. I can also, you know, note, um, you know, not just the content that I've published, but other content that I've found interesting, right? So I know a lot of, you know, people do this and they have been doing it for a while, but I am just like ramping up to it. And there's a couple things in play here. I'm not going to ramble on too much about it, but I'm getting help from people um, to write blog posts, which is awesome. It's great for the content side of it, but it also lightens my load so I could focus on some other things. And the great part is, I mean, I get to add my two cents into um, the writing of the contributors, right? But I also get in the audience, right? They get a fresh take on like new stories, right? So I've been telling the same stories for a little while and it's good to have some fresh ideas in there. All right, so now we got Friday, the weekly wrap up and I'm gonna type in a couple things here and we will fast forward this so it happens faster. Okay, so I added a couple things. As you notice, Monday is a big day. I'm like, I publish a blog post, I have a podcast coming out, and a YouTube video. Now, the good part is all of this content is usually repurposed for the specific format. Now, a lot of times on YouTube and the podcast, um, those can work together. Now, some YouTube videos are like visual tutorials, much like this one, Hence, they won't make much sense as a, as a podcast, right? I'm pointing and referring to the visual things that I'm doing on the screen. But the point is, um, you know, some stuff works in both places. And then for blog post, right, I can, you know, record the main points in an audio or video format or both at the same time. Typically, I try and separate it because sometimes it doesn't quite make sense. And 
podcasts tend to be longer form than YouTube videos. However, sometimes I make long YouTube videos because I... I'm I'm discovering it's just better to do my thing than trying to fit into a um you know the videos that YouTube um seems to favor or I mean honestly it's what the viewers favor but there are some viewers that do enjoy the long form anyway that it's it's different for everyone and how you know people create content it's totally up to them and I'm I'm flexible and I'm trying different things so as we're looking at it, we see we got the blog post, we have the emails that go out, we got podcast twice a week, we have one YouTube video. There's a strong chance I may release and schedule other YouTube videos um, like a different day of the week, maybe on Wednesday, I'm not 100% sure. Um, so the thing is we have just the generic stuff, um, the generic piece of content here. But what we can do, and the color scheme is important at this point, um, so for the blog post here, I can click on it. I can do a little editing and say, so it's a blog post, it's green, we know that. So what I can do um, once I know the specific topic is to say uh, what it is. So I could say, um, I know one coming up. I don't know if I'm actually gonna publish it on this day, but it's like a zero um, search volume blog post and we have this all right so we got it listed like that and one other thing um, that I, I maybe should have done before but it is okay I can definitely add it and that is to add like a little checklist here so whenever we do the blog post um, maybe I just want to make sure it's uh, like drafted scheduled and I'm not sure what else I do, <laughs> but th those are those potentially are the main points. So drafted and scheduled, and then I can save it. And this is the case where you would just say, I'm saving this one event. And then the actual blog, or sorry, the actual calendar entry is listed. And I know that it's a uh, blog post. Now, the problem is, it, um, oh, it's right here. So zero search volume blog post. It's green. And now I know what the topic is. Now, one thing I can do, like I mentioned, I need to, I could potentially um, add in like a mini checklist. So I could say, you know, for YouTube video, I know you would need to have a thumbnail, a description, and potentially tags, although that's not a huge deal, and, uh, at least for me. I know some people spend more time on tags and then any, you know, with the description, I have to think about external links, especially if I potentially have a guest on there or something like that. So the, the checklist or whatever doesn't have to be too complicated down here at all. Um, and in this case, I will save it and then I will update all events so that all of these have it listed in there and then I could say like done or not done or cross them out or whatever I want to do. So pretty straightforward and you could set up a calendar like this um, for any type of content. You can see I wanted to have everything in the same view. I have my own personal calendar um, on another calendar, right? So they're just called calendars and you could have different ones. I have a fa family calendar so my wife and I can put events that may be coming up. But in this case, I could just see like everything done or not done. And probably what I'll do is like when something is done. So I have this listed here, the zero search volume, whenever it is scheduled and ready to go, I will most likely um, change the entry to like scheduled, scheduled or some, if I could type it, scheduled or done or whatever, right? So whatever I need to change it to, I'll probably have the statuses listed like that. Um, and I know in this particular case that it is drafted. So I will, let's just see how this plays out. So I'll, I'll note it as drafted. And one thing you can do, there's different views, right? So if I wanna take a look at the weekly view, um, I can skip ahead, see the weekly view, the stuff that we have going on. 
um, in that particular week. You can also put it into a schedule format. So it's like listed out like this if you prefer. So it's pretty versatile. Um, typically, I'd probably be looking at the month view. Um, you could even zoom out to like the year, although it doesn't give you as much visibility, obviously, but you could zoom in if you hover over the specific day and click on it, it will tell you what's going on on those days. So if I look at June 20th, I see a podcast is listed and nothing else. And then if I look at the 21st, there's an email uh, weekly wrap up, All right? So that's, that's a good way to just like zoom out and see everything all together. Um, but again, I probably would look at the month. And for me personally, I'll be scheduling all the way out through August. So that's going to be quite a few, you know, blog posts, quite a few um, podcast episodes, especially. So that is how you can use Google calendars for uh, content calendar planning and just like getting a view of everything going on.